I'm Emilia Peterson, digital content editor on Finuddannelse DK, and I'm here to do an interview with the winner of the Sustainability Scholarship. So welcome, Barry. Well, thanks, thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> you are the winner among so many applicants. So um, how have you been feeling since you were told that you were granted the scholarship? Oh, it's, I mean, I'm delighted. I'm, I'm lost for words, really. Like, words can't describe how thankful I am um, to win the scholarship. Um, like, the fact that I was covering the cost of, like, helping to cover the cost of tuition, my education, um, and also the fact that just being a scholar is, is, is helping me apply for my visa and different things like that um, for going to the USA. I mean, it's just been amazing just to be, just be awarded. Um, and even the exposure just to be, be a scholar will help me make a bigger impact in promoting environmental awareness. Um, and it's also given me great confidence, a good confidence boost. And it's having given me that, like, you know, the drive and just succeed in my studies moving forward. So thanks for believing in me. Of course, you have earned it so much. <laughs> and um, can you tell us a little bit more about where you're from and what has led you to your passion for sustainability? Yeah, um, so my name is Barry. Um, I come from a small island just off the north coast of Ireland. Um, and I suppose I've grown up immersed in some of the country's most spectacular wildlife spectacles, being along the north coast and having that wilderness at my front door. Um, you know, it was inevitable that I was always going to grow up, come, become mesmerized by the natural world and all its glory. Um, but at the same time, I've also witnessed firsthand the accelerating loss of biodiversity and the alteration of ecological patterns resulting from, you know, climate change and, and a growing human population. And I suppose, you know, my generation in general has grown up with the consequences of environmental problems being at the forefront of our media. Mm -hmm. And again, seeing the complexities of how a growing human population is impacting the natural world. And I suppose it is through that perspective, which has sparked my ultimate goal of pursuing a lifelong career dedicated to sustainability mm -hmm. um, and environmental protection. Um, so I suppose, yeah, with that goal at heart, I spent the last several years um, devoted to volunteering for a number of different conservation projects. Um, yeah. along, along the coast of Ireland um, and these ventures as well I've been completing my degree uh, my undergrad in environmental environmental sciences at Ulster University yeah so because when I was a... yeah because exactly what you're talking about now I'm really interested in how you have chosen your education path in general because now a lot of universities have great sustainability programs and So why did you choose to study at Berkeley in California and, and how did you end up choosing a master program in development, uh, development engineering? Yeah, well, I suppose, um, obviously the volunteering um, kind of gave me that conservation background. Mm. And then again, completing my degree in environmental science um, kind of gave me that passion and ambition to protect the natural world. But I suppose having those two experiences were, were quite different. Although they were both within the environmental bubble, they were kind of different as well. So they're interdisciplinary in approach. Mm. And it kind of gave me that ambition to kind of strive to transcend conventional scientific boundaries. So working within the environmental science sector, but then also creating new solutions, such as like through conservation and youth advocacy. So we could address like global challenges facing biodiversity, um, environmental protection and sustainability from a more interdisciplinary approach rather than this, um, rather than me specializing within one degree. You could do look at it in an interdisciplinary way as well. That makes so much sense. Because, yeah, you have done a lot of volunteer work, which really has shaped your, your path. And can you tell us just a little bit more about uh, your work, especially with, with conservation and why you think that's important? Yeah, no problem. Um, so I suppose my experience with conservation stemmed from like when I was really young um, growing up on the on the west coast of Ireland and um, a lot of a lot of my neighbors were all like scientists and all they moved out there to be in the middle of, of the national parks and things like that so growing up my childhood instead of like going out with my friends I was always um, being like uh, a tag team with them guys I, I'd follow them out on their, their science expeditions and things like that and I suppose I got exposure then from a really young age into that whole conservation um, and networking bubble So I got to go on different experiences along the North Coast, both with, um, within the marine environment, but also within the terrestrial environment as well. Um, and I suppose most recently, over the last five years, I've been working on the Inch Partridge Project, which is a reintroduction project here in Ireland, um, and we're based on Inch Island. And our aim is to create a suitable environment where locally captive bred and released grey partridge can flourish in the wild. And we use our project as a totem for the best um, demonstration of like uh, farmland management for the conservation of Um, Ireland's growing nesting farmland birds. 
Um, so that's really where my background within conservation goes. And I suppose why that's important is we've lost over 50% of biodiversity in the last few years. Mm. Um, and that's due to obviously climate change, but also the growing human population and habitat loss. Um, and we are having an ecological crisis right now. Um, and it's up to us to protect the natural world for generations to come. You know, we've lived side by side with nature for thousands of years, but it's only in the last hundred years that the rate of climate change and the rate of human, human advancement through, you know, ecological and the intensification of agriculture, that it's basically too fast for nature to like adapt along beside us. Mm. Um, so I suppose, yeah, it's important because if we don't act now, um, time's going to run out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there is no doubt that what you, you are doing has a huge impact and you are truly an, a really important youth voice on sustainability. And you've done so much in terms of climate change activism and also, you have co-founded the Earth Action Hub. Can you tell us about that project? Yeah, I'd be delighted to. Um, so Earth Action Hub is a global youth-led project, which I've been co-founding since last September, alongside my final year. Um, and I've been co-founding that with seven other environmentalists um, who we met online. So we've never met in person. Um, and mm -hmm. they're from New Zealand, uh, Germany, Denmark, Italy, Brazil, and the UK. Um, so we wanted to basically create an online space for people to connect across the world, just like us, um, and share resources uh, and run projects for sustainability and also share like different ideas and things that they're doing from across the world. Um, but alongside that, our aim was to bridge the gap between generations, cultures, and then the global north and south, all for climate action. And we also wanted to make it accessible to everyone. So not just um, the Greta Thunbergs of the world who are out going and mm. doing all these amazing things, but also people that are aware of the environment, but they're not necessarily climate active yet. Mm. So, so far the whole project's been amazing. It's been incredible. Um, the Foundation for Environmental Education and Force Weavers are offered to be our like host organization. Um, and to launch our platform, we are hosting our first annual event um, this May from the 21st to the 23rd. And it's gonna be over three days. And we have over 56 events from like opening ceremonies um, and closing ceremonies with keynote speakers, um, workshops, panel discussions. Um, we've got a film premiere, uh, a wow. knowledge hub, and net different networking opportunities. And we've teamed up with some of the world's most leading organizations as well to do all this. It's so impressive and so important. And um, yeah, I just also wanted to ask you a few questions about the scholarship. Um, because we had a lot of applicants to it. And I'm really curious if we, if you would have any tips for people applying for, for scholarships, maybe in general or this scholarship. And, uh, and if you could share some of that insight. Um, yeah, of course. Um, I suppose the best advice I would give is, you know, treat your application, whether it's an essay or like an application form, treat it like a diamond. So when you think of a diamond, the more sides it has, the more it shines and the more the more value it has. So if you can bring that into your essay, treat your essay like, like a diamond. So the more perspectives that you bring to the table, the more it's going to shine and the more it's going to stand out um, to, the, to the assessment committee. So, you know, so di show different sides to your personality, whether that's your interests, your passions, mm. or even like the challenges you've overcome or even your successes. The more, the more different perspectives that you can bring in into it, the more people are going to relate to you as like on a human level and understand your ambitions and, your, and where you're coming from. So I suppose if you, and if it's a, an application form where you have multiple questions, you know, talk about one, if you're talking about one experience for one question, then you have another question, talk about something different. Mm. So, that, so that you're adaptable and you've got different experiences as well. Yeah, that's such a good tip. Treat it like a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Definitely you have. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Well, I suppose as well. Like another another tip I'd give is don't treat it like a CV because mm. you know if you're going to a job, you would would treat it as a CV. But yeah. a lot of scholarship organisations they're investing in you as a person. So don't don't make your application a CV. Make it more make it more in depth. Make it more personal. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah, because that was really what we could really feel your drive and your ambition and and also. For this interview, I'm a little, I'm interested in um, hearing about your long-term goals uh, with this program and where, where you wish to be in the future. Yeah, definitely. Well, I suppose um, my, my short-term goals really is um, Earth Action Hub. So I'll be working alongside it with that um, for as long as I can. And hopefully yeah. we'll get, make it as big and as impactful as we can that we can help as many people um, and do the best work we can for our planet. 
Well, I suppose as well, um, obviously I'll be going away to do my master's. Um, and through my master's, my aim is to further my voice in terms of being an advocate for environmental education and youth empowerment, but also to pursue my career within sustainable development. Now, I suppose how, I'm, how that career is going to develop in the future um, is quite open. Uh, I know myself over the last, even over the last couple of months, never mind the last year, um, so many different doors have opened. Um, and even with COVID, you would expect like a lot of doors to close, but moving into the virtual realm, and um, there's so much more opportunities as well. So um, I'm quite open. Um, my aim is to work in a role that I can make as big as impact as possible and do as much for my planet. So whether that's working with, you know, multilateral or non, non-government organizations, or, or even moving into like sustainable entrepreneurship, I'm not sure. But one thing I know for sure is that I want to make as big an impact as I can for my planet. That's so inspirational. And one thing is for sure, you're going to achieve great things. And we're just really thrilled to be able to support your journey and see where it takes you. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thanks again for the scholarship. I mean, it's life changing. So thank you. Oh, thanks. Thanks.